Top of the morning to everybody. All right, I know it's been a long time since I've posted anything, and this is because I've been working through a new system that we have. Um, we recently upgraded our computers, and I can discuss that in another um, episode, tell you kind of what we did. But it's been a long process. Um, it's not just one of those simple things of, okay, let's swap out the computer and done. It's been quite an interesting adventure, shall I say the least. Okay, today, uh, what I'm going to do is, because we have new computers, a lot of, and we're also running the uh, Yosemite, so a lot of the new, a lot of the Final Cut Studio stuff that I used to use before isn't really compatible. It doesn't work very well. So today, I am going to create a DVD in, um, in Final Cut Pro itself. Now... It doesn't have as many features as the DVD Studio Pro did. I can't do any scripting or anything like that. I never really did that to begin with. But this is just for a client to view anyway, so I'm not too worried. But I can't do custom menus and I can't do custom um, layouts and things like that. So that's not so much fun. What I can do is I can, I can share it as a DVD. Now let me show you here. If you go to Add Destination... You go to File, Share, Add Destination. You can see all your different destinations. And anytime you want to add one, all you have to do is grab it and drag it and drop it here. And then you put in the credentials or whatever it is that you're going to put in. Um, and then once you do that, you are done. So let's say I wanted to do DVD with a certain setting. Um, I can make it output to the hard drive. Um, I can also make it out put to my DVD player, which I don't have connected right now. I can do single or double layer or automatic layers, depending on the media. Um, I can pick a black or a white template. I like black better. I think it looks a little more, I don't know, my style, I guess. Um, when the disc loads, I can make it play the movie first or show the menu first. And I usually like to play the movie first. It all depends on what I'm doing. Um, and then you can use chapter markers as subtitles, or you can also subtitle it yourself and throw subtitles in there, or closed captions if you have those. Um, you can add your own background, but it's 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 kind of weird. Um, I can't pick any movie files. You notice that? So all of these movie files that are in here, I, I cannot use, but I can pick a picture file. So if I wanted to grab Empire Ballroom back, for example, and throw it in there. So now I can see this picture in there. All right. My chapter menu has the same kind of thing. Um, but your chapter menus are if you have chapter markers in your timeline, you can place them in there. Okay. Just hit the little X and it goes away. Okay. I'm going to delete this because I don't want this. But I do want to do this. I'm going to show chapter markers. All right. This is before we create anything. Let's say I've got chapter one here. Let's go ahead and put a marker there. See how it creates a little blue marker here? So if I right click, I can change it to chapter. So I'm going to put another one right here. Right click and change it to chapter. And let's go right to the end of the commercial. Now, for this particular event, uh, not event, for this particular project, I normally don't use chapter markers. It might be something I will do, I'll start to do a little bit later. Um, let me delete this marker. I didn't want it there. I wanted it right there. But I, I normally don't use them because the client that views this doesn't really need them. Um, they start the project and let it go, and it just loops. It's no big deal. Okay, so I've got the chapter marker, so I'm going to go to Share DVD. And when I go to my settings and I look at my chapter menu, there are chapters here. Now, it's not really going to show you what's going on, but it does have chapters. Okay, so if somebody was looking at the chapter menu, when they look at the main menu, you can't really see this because it's so small. But there's a play, and then there's like a chapter thingy on one of these sides. And if you go to chapter menu, then you can see all the different chapters. 
And if you have several pages of chapters, you can skip through the pages. Okay, so let me plug in this DVD burner real quick. Okay, so it came up. I heard it, so I'm going to export this again. Share as DVD. Settings. Now I can change this to Pioneer Blu-ray Drive. Now most of these settings I leave the same. Once you've set them, they stay that way in your, um, in your settings until you decide to change it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit share and it's going to start sharing. Okay, and you can see the progress as it shares. I do not have a disk in the drive. It's just sharing. What will happen is after it's, it has processed everything and compressed it so it's ready to go, it will, um, it will bring up another little application called burn disk, I think is what it's called. And it will ask you to insert the disk at that time. Now, usually what I do, just because I, I want to get it going, is I will put the disk in now. So let me go grab one. Okay, I grab the disk and I slide it into the disk burner. Now, this is just a Pioneer portable disk burner. Um, it just uses USB 3, but I've got it plugged into USB 2. It's plenty fast. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so I've plugged it in. And it's going to come up and it's going to ask me if I want to open the Finder or if I want to um, ignore it or open iTunes, I think, is the other option. I'll show you the options when they come up. Okay, so the options have come up. It says open Finder, open iTunes, open Disk Utility, run other application or run a script. There are scripts that you can do that will automate certain things. Um, I'm not really that good at script writing, so I can't open that or I can't do that. Open other application might be if you have like Roxio Toast or if you're just opening up Final Cut Pro, you can do that. What I just do is I hit ignore. You can also make it default, but I like that to pop up because sometimes I'm doing something different, like doing something in disk utility or whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and let this finish. And when it's done, I'll show you the uh, disk burn app when it comes up. Okay, you can see how the little Create Disk app has popped up. That's what it's called, Create Disk. Okay, so this is burning a disk. It doesn't really give you much um, in terms of progress, but you can still use this in terms of progress so you can see how it's doing. All right, it's at 86%. And when it's done, the disk will just pop out and it's done. All right, so I'm going to wait until this is done because I'm going to create a Blu-ray as well, and I'm going to show you the differences. There's not really much of a difference, but there is a difference between the two. In fact, actually, I can start creating a Blu-ray now, and I'll show you. Let's move this aside. And I can go File, Share, Blu-ray. I have already created a Blu-ray um, destination. But if you go to your settings, you can also see there's a difference in size. If you go to your settings, when my DVD is done, I'll be able to do it on the output device of the disk burner, which is what I really want to do. Um, I have different layers. I also have different templates, just three more templates than I did before. I still choose black. You can choose chapter markers as subtitles, and you can also include a loop movie button. Now there's different parts here. You have a background, a logo graphic, and a title graphic. And I'll show you the differences between those two. The background is, let's throw this in here, the background, right there. Okay, let's get rid of it. And let's do a logo graphic. Same graphic. And it goes right here, okay? Now I can add a Telemundo logo or whatever I want there. I usually just leave it empty. And title graphic. And it looks almost exactly like the background, but it actually goes on the foreground. Um, let's show you the difference between the two. I'm going to put, um, let's put this, Colorscape Matte. And let's add a title graphic of this one here. And you'll see how the title graphic goes on top of the Colorscape Matte. And if I go to the chapter menu, my title graphic disappears. 
Okay, so there's some differences there. I just leave it black. No one ever looks at it anyway in mine. Okay, I'm going to cancel this because I wanted to finish burning the disk um, before I continue. Uh, the reason being is because I don't want to burn it to the hard drive because then it's a little more difficult to burn it to a disk after that. I find it just really quick and easy to burn directly to the disk from Final Cut Pro. Okay, it just popped out, and this is kind of a cool little feature of the create disk thing. It asks if I want to burn again. So I can burn the same thing. I don't have to re-render the entire thing. I'll hit burn again and make a second copy if I want to. I don't right now. So what I'm going to do instead is insert the Blu-ray disk. I'm just going to hit OK. And now I will export this as a Blu-ray while I, while I put in the disk. And I have all my settings the way I want except that. And I hit share. And now it will create the menus and do the exact same thing it did for the DVD, only on a Blu-ray disc. Let's hit ignore on that. Okay, and I will be back when it's done. Okay, so now the burn is complete, and I can hit burn again, like I said before, and it won't have to do all the re-rendering and re-encoding of everything. It will just let me make a second copy. But I don't want one for this particular project. I'm just going, to head, going ahead and hit OK, and I'm done. All right, so that's how you burn a DVD and how you burn a Blu-ray, the differences between the two on Final Cut Pro. Um, as far as quality goes, there is a huge difference. Um, I do them both because the client requests both. They take one home and leave the other in the store, I guess. All right. Um, that was a quick run through. Hopefully you got something out of that. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching.